Hi, and welcome to another edition of how learning how to do machine embroidery digitizing um, with OMLEmbroidery.com, sponsored by OMLPatches.com. Today we're going to talk about how to create perfect lettering in Embird Studio. Just so you know, you can create lettering in Manager. It's just basic lettering. You can't really manipulate it a whole lot. You'll start getting errors. You can make it a bit bigger and a bit smaller, but you can't do baselines and you can't do all the fancy stuff we're going to do today. So the first thing we're going to talk about is um, how to do it. And you can insert text and you can insert um, true type fonts, search, uh, you know, uh, ones that you download from the internet. Um, two different complete things. The um, built-in fonts, and you have to pay for a few of them. They're worth it. They're absolutely perfect. You never have any errors. The true type fonts are pretty good. They don't always work. You have to be really careful and you have to look at it in 3D and you really can't make them very small at all because they're not specifically designed for embroidery. Some of them are amazing and some of them you just look and go, no. Ones with little holes through them, they, they won't work unless you make them big and then they're great. But for small stuff, I would stick with the insert regular text. But we're going to work on both of them. So let's see basically what we can do. You insert text and you click a point and then we don't have all the alphabets but we have a couple of them. Let's just stick with something plain. How about this? So we'll type OML embroidery. So that's your basic font. Not, they'll look good, um, but it's just a straight line. So what can you do with these? Well, let's see, you can change the baseline. So we were on a straight one. You can just do with one click, you can put it on a circle. You can wavy line, which I'm fond of. That actually looks good in a lot of things. Um, I like this one too, swirly. And now you can adjust it by pulling it in, making it a little bit smaller. You can, um, see it's kind of weird having the lettering around like this. So you can, um, up in the top here on the left, you can change the justification of it. So let's do it left justified and it moves everything around. So if you typed a lot more, you could get it around. Um, the other thing you can do is change the side that it's on. So it changed everything. Um, that that would be pretty cool if you generate it. Takes a minute. Sorry. There we go. See? It's a beautiful curve on it. Now if you want to go back, we're obviously not done. If you want to go back, you can right click and you can edit text. Or up here on the left, this is also edit text. I'm in the habit of right clicking, so that's what I'm going to do. So here we are back at this again. So we're up on the right here, playing around with baselines. And there's quite a few here that are, you know, in a pinch. You can do them. That one didn't work very well, but let's move it over here. And you can, let's put it this way. Mm, we could move it down, so let's do center. See how easy that is? It's very simple. So the other thing you can do very quickly, let's pick some, oh, slanted, that's awesome. Let's move it down so you can see it. That's a bit big, but you can um, go in, if you don't like the baseline, this is what the lettering is on, it's called a baseline. Let's make it just a little bit smaller. So we can see a little bit better. Now this one here, the curve is here because I haven't generated it yet. So we're just going to ignore it for now. So let's click on baseline nodes. So now you see you get the node so you can adjust if you don't want the angle quite that much. Make it a bit longer if you want to make your, let's add some spacing to the words. So there's a little bit more of a difference. And I'm just clicking away, see how they move. You can move the characters. Um, you can move, uh, we only have one line, but that's what that one would be. Let's move it back to zero. It doesn't matter. So the other thing you can quickly do is um, move around the characters. Now this is fantastic. You can get really detailed with your lettering. Now what we have here is a little guide box, I call it. I don't really know what the technical name is. And you can go through each letter individually. 
and you can make adjustments. This green dot here, and you see the green line, that will move it up and down. So if you want it, you know, skewed a little bit, and then you want the R, say, up, just, just a little bit. It moves pretty quickly. See, you can get a really good look, and it's still basically on the baseline. If you wanted, let's move the R up a little bit, and then you can, these ones here are for skewing it. See how it moves? Put it back, and this one will go up and down sort of thing. So you can really get a lot of details with that. The blue one makes it fatter. See, the whole thing kind of moves out. So you can stretch them, you can move them around. It goes up and down too. Do you see how I'm doing that? So it makes it taller and then it makes it fatter. You can basically see by the box there. So let's move the R back. It's a bit wider, but hey, that kind of looks cool. If you want some kind of an overlap, you can always join them after too. So that is really, you can get a lot of detail. You can go back in uh, even while you're just setting it up and you can change the font. See, and it changes and gives you a completely different look. How about we move the characters a bit so that R fits in a little bit better. And again, you can still go back and you can change all the details that you want about it. So there you go. That's your baseline right there where you can pick it. And here, like I said, you can make it bigger or smaller. Um, baseline nodes where you can change the shape of it. Let me show you that again. Let's do uh, a curve one right here. So, and then we're going to, oops. Yeah, I do that all the time. And let's go to undo because I'm in baseline node. So wherever I click, it's going to add or change a node. So we want to go back to baseline and then we can move it where we see it. So back to baseline nodes and you've got these little adjusters here. So if I didn't want the curve quite so strong, you can just very, very quickly adjust it. So let's take a look at that. Let's generate the stitches. Yeah, see, that's kind of cool. And it erased everything else we were looking at. <coughs> Excuse me, the R doesn't obviously doesn't look the greatest. But there's so many more things we can do with it. So let's right click and edit text. Now we, we're on baseline node. So remember, if I click here, it's going to add a node and it's going to mess everything up. And I do it all the time and I drive myself crazy. So try not to do that. So let's have a nice curve like that. Let's go and uh, let's fix our R a little bit. I could just start again, but it's kind of fun playing with these things. So, yep, that's that's about right on that. So again, we can um, up here, and let's go through everything here. This is if you want to cancel. That is uh, finish it, but it doesn't generate it. This one will finish and generate. Um, if you want to delete the text and start again, uh, you'll still keep the same baseline and what you've got, but just do different text. might be a time saver here. Um, we talked about this over and above. That'll be very handy in circles. Um, now this one is actually kind of cool. You can have the regular satin stitches that we normally use. This is a satin stitch with an outline. Now you can't see it yet because I haven't generated it. Now I'm going to generate it. And if you go over here on the right, you can see all of our letters and you can see just the outline. So it automatically puts an outline on, which is fantastic. Then, of course, you can go in. Let's block all these ones and we're going to make them black and then black and orange. Yeah, that's pretty good. See, that's cool. That could be a bit bigger because you can see the stitches, but still awesome. You can go in and... Um, go into parameters for that and you can of course change the stitches. I think that actually has a really cool look. You can do sketch for a small... Uh, see it's too fat, you can't do that. Anyways, let's see what else we can do. If it was bigger you could actually do one of these fancy stitches. Obviously it's not going to look good because we're quite small. What a mess, what a mess. But bigger, one inch, one and a half, two inch writing, you can do that and it'll look great. Let's try red work. Yeah, it's just about the same. Bit thicker, if you notice, a little bit thicker. So let's just generate stitches and leave that. 
And we're going to block off the whole thing. We're going to right click and we're going to edit text. And we're going to go do another one. How about we, uh, yeah, let's go to baseline and let's make the whole thing just a little bit bigger because maybe we can see things better. And we'll move it down so that other one is out of the way. I guess I could start again and make it better. All right, so we've got the baseline bigger. How about we make the lettering bigger? You can see it's only three inches long and 70, 0.72 uh, high, so it was particularly small. So let's just make it bigger, at least one inch, and then we can do different things with it. Well, not quite one inch, but you know what? That'll be fine. We're almost at an inch. I could make my baseline longer. See how you can play around with it if it's not working? It's easier to figure out the size, say, if you had another uh, embroidery design that you're, you know, maybe water that you're putting the lettering over. That would make it easy. You can always tell, though, if you're just doing lettering by itself, if it's big or small without even looking at the numbers at the bottom, just by how the stitches work out. Okay, so, and I like the baseline nodes. So let's go here. We did... We did that one. We can do um, just a regular stitch, not a satin stitch. Um, again, you can't see it because I haven't generated it, but I could. See, now it's just a flat stitch. Could be kind of useful. Um, looks good. Let's try it again. Why don't we go up here? And this one's very cool. You can do um, a regular flat stitch with an outline. So let's generate that, and we'll see here. See, and it puts the outline automatically in it. I'm going to change the color so you can see it just a little bit better. There we are. See how pretty that is? Three clicks, and that's what you get. Awesome. Okay, so moving on to the next idea we have. Uh, we've got to, well, let's, let's do the whole thing. And we're going to right click and we're going to edit text and we're back with our baseline and this one if you want to do just kind of single stitch better for smaller lettering small smaller lettering is pretty difficult it doesn't look very fancy here but if that was we were back at our original size it would be actually really small okay so let's undo that we're back at the really pretty one so uh, again, we're going to block everything and we are going to right click, edit text. I'll keep saying it. You remember the next thing on our panel up here are the connections and there's different kinds of connections, how you want the letters to connect. So this is nearest point. I don't think it's going to change until we generate it, but there, it just depends. No connections, you can do that. Let's generate it, and it'll take the stitches out. That just means, and that looks really cute, actually, that just means there's a lot of trims. So the way we have it set out, of course, you've got to organize everything. It's going to stitch all the pink, and after each one, it's going to trim. Um, and then once it's done all the pink, it's going to do all the green. So it will take longer on the machine, but there's no stitches in between. So let's show you the next one. So edit text. Let's go up here. And there's only a few to choose from. So let's try this one. And you see it's nearest point, which it still looks okay. That's the way stitching is. They're nice and solid. There's trims and everything in it so it'll stitch out all the pink and it'll go back and stitch out all the green so let's do edit text and then do this one and I think it's this one and we will generate the stitches oh did I pick the last one anyways you get the idea depending on the look you want and it also depends on your machine the only thing I don't like about this one is it put a little stitch in there that you would have to cut out I don't like that. You would have to take little trimming scissors, and it's on the R as well, and you would have to fix that to make it look much better because the green really shows up on the pink. Um, so we did styles. Let's see. 
So the other thing you can do, so that's pretty fancy. You can go back in any time and you can make your adjustments by going up here. You can also, um, we didn't really look at this, but you can change your parameters of everything and this tells you how much everything's skewed. You can, you know, change direction. There's a lot of things you can do, but you can get your lettering set up absolutely perfectly. So keep, uh, that's another thing. If you want, you know, letters taller, because right now when we stretch the lettering out, it all goes together. If you want it, you know, tall, skinny letters, uh, you have to unclick this keep aspect ratio, and then you can move this and it moves, move up. See, it moves independently. It's not making it any longer. Uh, it's just making it higher. If you want everything to stay the way it is, then you make sure that's on. So lots of things to do. Let's see what's next here. Oh yeah, you can create. Let's generate this. Generate. I think that looks pretty good. Why don't we just put it up here? Now let's do, go to your outline stitches. And we're going to place a couple of points right here, right here, and right here. And I'm going to bend them a little bit. It kind of looks like a mustache. And then I'm just going to do a sample stitch, just plain and ordinary. There we go. What you can do with this is you can go to text and you can go text with selected object as baseline. So click on that and then you can type. and it goes right on your baseline so you can create any shape that you want. It's fantastic. We use it all the time. So you can, once you get it like this, now I have spaces between the characters, you can bring that in. Of course the B is sitting kind of funny, so we could make it a little smaller so it flips over. See that's not too bad. I probably would do it a little bit differently so the lettering, but it depends on what shape you do. It's, it's pretty easy. So say I don't like how this is curved up because it separates the letters. So the letters are going here and then they start again on here. So you can still go to baseline nodes and you see you have these little, you can move them, but you have these little controls. So if you click on it and hold, you can bring it up and you click on this side. It's kind of separated in sides and see you can maneuver it exactly how you want. So we can move it. Let's see, isn't that better? It's still kind of the same shape, but it's not really as definite. So then let's generate it and have a look. Yeah, see, isn't that cool? Now, if you kept that same baseline, all you have to do is go in and delete it because you actually created a stitch. If you forget to do it, it's still going to be sitting there. Yep, I've done that too. So look at the nice curves and the light, nice motions that we can do with lettering. So you can, um, you can manipulate, you can change your lettering. Say you go in and that's just not quite right. Edit text, figure out what you need to do. It'll always bring it back to its original position. Say I want characters changed. Actually, what I do want is more space between the words on this one. That's fine. So let's go into characters and we get to play with our little box. And you can see you want it to go with the slant of the lettering. So you can skew it a little bit. And yeah, that looks absolutely fantastic. I like it. Oops. See, you can get it perfect. If you don't like it, you just go back and you can play around with it. Let's do these ones backwards or up or down. No, I don't know. What do I like? Yeah, it'll look kind of weird on that one, but so I'm just pulling it down and now you've created with a few clicks, a whole complete different look. What I'm doing on this one to get them perfectly, I'm just slanting it with the marker here. That one's fine, and that one's fine. See, doesn't that look great? Yeah, and now it has even more 
slant it kind of goes with the flow and everything and say we didn't like we want it to be different so we can go in and we're just going to do plain satin stitches and generate look at that so a couple of different looks i like the top one that one is just regular so we could even go in and edit text again and we can change the font and see see what we have we don't have all of them but we have quite a few because we use them all the time how about a little fancy one yeah that's not going to work you can make it work though of course you make the baseline a little bit bigger make the letters a little bit smaller so that one's easy too and you can just play around until you get the exact look that you want see i like that one too even though the m and the b are crossed we could um, fix that quite easily but let's just leave it for now because we're going to do a whole different thing see i like that i think that looks really good other than this i would fix that okay so let's delete 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 or not no i guess we can let's just take all of it and right click and delete and now we're at a clean slate we're going to start again so let's do plain lettering and we're going to do oml embroidery that's a big big so you can click on here and we'll move it so it fits so if you generate that that's just straight across that's with the last font that we had looks pretty good so what else can you do with lettering well you can transform lettering you can go down to envelope and you can skew the lettering so let's pick one we can make it circular now you see how it skews the lettering to the shape i don't like that one let's try this one see isn't that cool now it's a bit wonky in the ends but i'm going to generate it and i'm going to show you how cool that is see you get the slant of everything doesn't really work with this lettering so let's go uh edit text let's pick something a little more plain because this is quite large and generate generate okay we're back at plain and it's quite big there's a lot of space between there so we'll do edit text let's bring it closer together so this is going to look better oops i went too far now it's just right click to lower the numbers and left click to raise them up so we're going to generate that generate and we're going to go to transform and we're going to go to envelope see now that looks much better so you just have to get the right font for what you're doing does not look fantastic i'm going to generate it and then you can see that is amazing lettering so you can give your instead of just having straight across that looks amazing that would look good on just about anything you do but let's play around a little bit more with oh we don't want that sorry my bad so we're going to x out we're gonna you have to click on it click on the whole thing and we're going to transform and we're going to go to shape uh, envelope again let's try another one to see what kind of a look we can get that one might be kind of cool let's try another one i didn't like the circle one too much did i these ones are cool i like that one so what you can do on some of them is you can make adjustments so we've got these little pulls and you can change the curve just like that so if you want it to look even more distinct and you're filling space that's what you can do right there so that's a more of a dramatic look and if you can look you can see basically it's gonna look really good with this lettering see isn't that great so we could do even fancier now that we got that going we're gonna edit text we're gonna do this all over again but that's okay it's only a few clicks right it's only a few clicks so I want to do the um, flat lettering with the outline so let's generate see I like that the pink and the green for no apparent reason maybe it's spring colors so we've got the pink and the green 
um, I'd still fix these connections, but that's okay for now. So transform envelope and you can make a custom one. I haven't done that yet, but that's okay. Let's go to this one and we'll pull it out to change the angle just a little bit. Make it quite a bit longer. I think I could probably play with this all day. It's really amazing what you can do with this program. Doesn't that look awesome? You could even, um, just to make it look fancier, you could put an outline around it. And it's almost almost like a monogram. You don't. I don't think you have to do anything more than that. So you can play around. Once you get this, you can go back into edit text. And it, of course, it goes back, but you can you know, skew the characters a little bit more. You can do quite a few other things. I think the envelope would look pretty cool on a swirly or up and down. Anyways, so you can play around. Let's generate that and then let's undo it. Edit, undo, because I really like that one. Now I'm just for the ease of everything. I'm going to right click and I'm going to group it and we're just gonna move it up. And we can talk a little bit about the true type fonts. See, that's awesome. So true type fonts works exactly the same way for everything. You just have to be quite careful with the true type fonts that you pick. So I picked that one and you, oh. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. And now they're up here. <coughs> so all of the fonts that you have already on your computer, they will show up here and they show you what they are. So ones like this that are nice and thick will turn out well on large designs. This one would be kind of touchy. Um, this one would be okay, but you can see it has small lines on it. Let's just do OML and take a look at it. Oh, and we did the pink and green. See, at this size, that's fine. But let's make it uh, smaller because this is, you know, normal size. But if you're going to make it smaller and then um, generate it, well, it looks okay because we have an outline. Now, if you didn't have the outline, um, I think the L is kind of funny. If you didn't have the outline, that would be just one single stitch of pink. And I don't. I don't think that would look pretty good very well but all right let's go edit text and let's go pick just your regular satin stitch and um, so what you can do if you have lettering and you don't think it looks very good see that's all right I think it would look but let's see if we make it smaller and uh, generate See, I don't think that looks very good at all. But say you want this really badly, so you would go in and you would edit text. There's a few things you can do to play around with it. The first thing I would do was take off the satin stitches. So let's just make it plain, and it goes back to the original. See, that looks really good. I kind of like that. Let's make it smaller and see how that looks, and generate it. Yeah, see that doesn't work. The O isn't good enough. So I think our best option was the flat stitches with the outline because that filled all that in and it, it just gave it a different look. But you can play around it, but, but again, you have to be you have to be really careful with what you do. They don't always work out. Um, a lot of them do. You just have to be particular with what you're doing. Something like this, you can see it's nice thick lettering. Yeah, see, that'll look, look fine, and you can make that smaller as well. So you could sit around, and you can play around with the lettering, and you'll find some favorites. One like this, everyone wants us to embroider these on patches, and it's a very difficult font. You can, it looks great on print, not so hot on embroidery. It has a hard time figuring out all the stitches. Um, that's one that a customer wanted me to do. Even the computer doesn't, I have a really big computer, and it doesn't like doing it because there's so many, all these are separates and there's going to be, you know, trims and a whole bunch of things. Yeah, obviously the computer doesn't like it too much. Um, I would steer clear of these unless you're doing 
great big, you know, one to two inch lettering on it. Yeah, I seem to be having technical difficulties here. And we got a not respond. Okay, we're back. The computer finally processed it. Um, that looks really good in print, but not so hot. Watch what happens when you make it smaller. And the computer still won't like it because there's so many things to process in it. Yeah, that just, I guess if you want that grungy kind of look, you can do it. But I, I would stay away from those kind. And you just have to understand that it just doesn't lend itself very well to embroidery. All right, let's try another one. Well, I guess you can get the idea. Something like this? No. No. Um, unless it's big. Again, unless it's big. Now the L is a snake. I don't even know why I have that. Really. Maybe I was playing around. Um, I guess that's okay. Kind of a weird font. Again, when you make it small, depending on what you're doing, and generate it, it didn't almost crash my whole computer so that's better but see it kind of looks awful let's make it really big and see if we can get more detail in it it's kind of groovy I guess yeah see the snake looks much better so if you have a fancy font a true type font that's installed in your computer and you can't get it to work the best thing is to try different things. They normally start off with the satin stitch. So if that doesn't work and it looks awful, then you can change the type. So we've got the flat stitch now, and that seems to work really well. So let's try the satin stitch and see what, how it looks. And we did it with an outline. Yeah, that just, it's, no, that doesn't work at all. So let's try another one you can try three or four things before you decide if it's going to work or not let's try the plain satin I didn't click it up enough last time and generate see that doesn't really work at any size so I would suggest for this one do the flat stitch and it's only a few clicks so you can try different ones very easily see that doesn't that doesn't look good at all I don't think <coughs> okay so now we've given you lots of ideas lots of awesome ways to do lettering lettering to me is pretty much what makes a design uh, depending what it is of course we do lots of logos and we do lots of patches um, with writing most patches have writing on it and you can get really fancy and they really look good so it's important to know um, your lettering and know how to do it um, always be big lettering usually works when you have satin stitches you need to be very careful because the satin stitches are very long and the lettering will get caught on stuff and it won't last so if I'm doing say one and a half inch big you know that's quite large think about how big the satin stitches are going to be if you go too big um, Embird won't even fill them in for you so um, you don't want to do that uh, so switch to the flat stitches and you'll be good let's go back to here we are in I'll make this a bit bigger so it fits in and I'm just going to show you quickly in manager you can add basic lettering in you can add basic lettering in manager but you can't do all the stuff that we did in studio so you can go here and you can add something And you can add it to an already digitized design if you're just adding quick lettering. But you can't curve it. You can't do anything. And you can only make it, you can make it small. But then if you make it big again, you can see it has errors in it. And it tells you if you keep doing that and see it doesn't see the errors. So you can only make it change the size of it once. If you keep doing it, Let's see, make it bigger so you can see it's missing stitches. Yes, I know. Thank you. And that's not going to work. So if you're just doing one line just really quickly, you can, and say there's another embroidery design here, you can do that. 
Um, but for fancy lettering, and if you want to manipulate the lettering, <coughs> you need to be doing it in studio. And you can, there's so many things you can do. I love the outlining. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. Um, I think next time we are going to do another digitizing. I'll think of something. If you have any suggestions, just leave me a note about it. Hopefully you can add uh, really excellent lettering to any digitizing um, and make wonderfully creative embroidery and take your lettering to a next level and make it look fantastic. Anyways, thank you very much. Um, happy weekend from OML Embroidery.